In this video, I'll be talking about how phylogenetic trees represent hierarchical relationships. So phylogenetic trees are essential tools in evolutionary biology, ecology, also epidemiology, paleontology, anthropology. And they are all about representing evolutionary relationships. We use them to define species that are closely related, such as humans and chimpanzees, which are sister species. We can indicate and infer that they had, they had a common ancestor, sometimes in the past. Uh, we can infer that gorillas are more distantly related and that all three of these species had a more distant common ancestor, represented by this blue dot here. And that all of these are a closely related to each other relative to other species and form a clade. Overall phylogenetic trees help us to recognize and organize information about related species. When it comes to humans, phylogenetic trees let us organize and understand the relationships between all of our closest relatives, which are apes. Gibbons are apes, and the rest of these are considered great apes, and then gorillas, chimps, and bonobos are all African apes. So we have different categories of apes. We are all more, much more ape-like than anything else, and we are more distantly related to other primates, such as monkeys. All of these are extant species, the extant species, species that are still alive today. This is in contrast to extinct species, so we'll be focusing here in this case study on species that are still alive and today. We'll be ignoring Australopithecus and Neanderthals and other extinct species and subspecies. This is a range map indicating where orangutans, uh, excuse me, gibbons occur, and it's showing where these extant taxa are found in Southeast Asia. Range maps can be used for species or subspecies or genera will be, or genera in general, we'll be using them for species and subspecies. There are several, spe several genera, genus, different genuses, to use a term that's not actually correct, different genera of gibbons and numerous species. They occur throughout uh, mainland and um, island Oceania. There are also three species all in the same genus. So there's one genera, three species of orangutans that all occur throughout Southeast Asia on the island of Sumatra and Borneo, which are part of Indonesia. And then chimpanzees. There is one species of chimpanzees, and then they're close cousin bonobos, their sister species rather, uh, bonobos, both are in the genus Pan. Bonobos occur in Central Africa as a single population. And then chimpanzees, Pan troglodytes, occur as several populations that are, all con that are considered to be several subpopulations. So there's the Wen West African Pan troglodytes in the far western part of Africa in Senegal and Guinea and parts of Mali. And then there are those in Cameroon and in Central Africa. And they are all a subspecies of Pan troglodytes where bonobos are a separate species, Pan paniscus. Gorillas, there are two species of gorilla, one genus, gorilla, and then two subspecies and several subspecies. They are roughly divided into Western species and Eastern species, and then there's two of each. There's Gorilla, 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 and Gorilla, Gorilla Delii in the West. And then in the East, Gorilla Berengii, Berengii, and Gorilla Graeria. So we can organize these relationships based off of genetic and morphological information. We know that chips and bonobos are sister species. They are closest relatives to humans. So chips and bonobos share a recent common ancestor, uh, somewhat more distantly. The, 
these uh, three species share a common ancestor. We are next most closely related to gorillas and then orangutans and gibbons. Now we'll be using this case study of apes to talk about hierarchical relationships in particular, how we can understand it, understand hierarchical groupings of species and genera and nested relationships of genera. So hierarchical relationships are all about rank. And so a classic example would be military ranks. So we'll focus on colonels here. Colonels, we would say, are outranked. They are lower in the hierarchy than generals. All colonels are the same rank. And then colonels outrank everyone else. Colonels are higher in the hierarchy than captains, sergeants, privates, so forth. So this is a classic hierarchical relationship. You can either be outranked of the same rank or, a, or lower rank. So hierarchical relationships can also establish organizations. So also within the military, and this is more like actually how we think about species, within the military, there is a hierarchical relationship of structure. So in the US Army, large groups of soldiers are organized logistically and the, in uh, how they mobilize into divisions. Each division has three brigades. Each brigade is has within it three or more battalions. And then each battalion has platoons within it each platoon has squads, and each squad is composed of soldiers. So this is a hierarchical relationship. All soldiers are a member of squads. All squads are organized into platoons. All platoons occur in companies. All companies are in battalions. All battalions are in brigades, and all brigades are in divisions. So this spreads out into a branching hierarchical tree where we start here at brigades, battalions, companies, platoons, squads and then soldiers would be down here with the hierarchy spreading out branch-like, tree-like, or rather root-like in this case. And this roughly could be considered similar to genus, species, subspecies, population, subpopulations, and then family, in this case meaning actual family of organisms, would be roughly analogous to this. Now both biological taxa, biological genera and groups, and then also military divisions and organizations. This is considered a hierarchy, where as I noted, everything occurs within something else. So soldiers are organized within, they occur within squads, squads occur within soldiers, soldiers are assigned to both a squad and a platoon, soldiers occur within a squad, a platoon, and a company, platoons within companies, and so forth. So just as all families, all Human families occur within subpopulations. All subpopulations occur within populations. We are all part of, there are no subspecies of humans currently. We're all within species. This is a nested hierarchy. Each level occurs with, um, in, or is fits within another level. So classic nested concept are so-called Russian dolls, where one thing fits in to the other. And all of the smaller things, each smaller thing fits into all of the levels uh, above it. So the small doll fits into the big doll, bigger doll, both this doll and the previous doll fit into the next larger doll and so forth. And they all fit together nicely like this. So nested hierarchies, the lower levels are all part of a higher level of classification. They all fit nicely together like that. We can represent these kind of hierarchies in terms of circle diagrams, where in the center is the smallest unit. So a soldier here is in the middle, a soldier occurs within a squad, a squad occurs within a platoon, and so forth. So they're nested together like the dolls. To actually show the full extent, we could have three squads here. Each squad has four soldiers in this case four soldiers within this squad, four soldiers within this squad, all three of these squads are in the platoon. So all of these platoons are, all of these, excuse me, soldiers are in this platoon, all 12 of these soldiers and all three of these squads, they all fit together. 
So phylogenetic trees represent hierarchical relationship. They're not just a tree used to organize things. They actually organize things into a hierarchical structure, and in particular, a nested hierarchical structure. So we'll use a case study of primates to explain what we mean by this. So we'll start with chimps and bonobos. They are sister species. They are both in the genus Pan. We put them together. They fit together in a genus. They are a clade. Chimps, bonobos, they are our sister genera to humans. So this genus Pan and humans and gorillas are all nested within, they all fit within the broader group of African apes. So chimps, bonobos, and humans all are African apes and gorillas are all African apes. We all fit together in that category. More broadly, all African apes plus orangutans fit within the group of great apes. So all chimps are great apes, bonobos are great apes, humans are great apes. We're also African apes and then bonobos and chimps are also within the genus Pan. So all these groups fit nicely together. We expand out further, we can then include gibbons and those are apes. So it's slightly more complicated than a perfect nice structure like the nesting dolls or the military. It's a little bit more complicated than that. But any lower level unit fits within, can be grouped within higher taxa, higher groups. So as a circle diagram, we could draw it like this, where we have three species of, um, excuse me, three genera, the genus Pan, genus Homo, genus Gorilla, are all African apes. They fit nicely within great apes. Uh, additional great ape is Pongo. They're in their little group here. We could put all, we could represent the separate species of Pongo if we wanted to. They're all great apes. And then great apes are all fit in, in the group apes. And then we could include Gibbon out here. So this is how we represent the slightly more complicated structure where not everything is perfectly nested within each other. As we include broader groups, other species show up that are also part of that group. So we can take a phylogenetic tree, we can also represent it as one of these circle diagrams.